If you happen to be watching this online, I should tell you that you're not only the viewer, you're also being watched. Whenever we're online, information brokers collect our data and use it to assemble user profiles that can earn them a lot of money. Online tracking, our topic today on Shift. It seems everybody's favorite buzzword these days is privacy. Even giants like Google, Microsoft and Facebook. Companies that basically invented gathering user data say they now also want to protect it. I can't remember the last tech conference that didn't mention privacy. Seriously, if I had gotten a euro for each time privacy was said at these events, I could retire. Privacy is a human right. We strongly believe that privacy and security are for everyone, not just a few. So that's why I believe that the future is private. Big promises. But just how credible are these statements, considering their business models are built around earning money with user data? I know that we don't exactly have the, the strongest reputation on privacy right now, to put it lightly. He is right, you know. Any credence I still had for the company's data protection promises was erased by recent privacy scandals. So how does tracking work? And what role do cookies play? Whenever you visit a new website, it's highly likely you'll be asked to accept cookies. Cookies are small text files that are placed on a user's device. They contain information such as the username entered or the language a website was accessed in. It's important to distinguish between first-party cookies and third-party cookies. First-party cookies are placed by the website being visited. They can only be read by that domain's owners and can help provide a good user experience. Third-party cookies, on the other hand, do not come from the site being visited. They come from third parties, which interact in a global industry as this web page shows. These data collectors are often linked to advertisements or social media buttons and can track a user over multiple websites. And they can harvest much more data than most users are aware of. Google announced it will be limiting online tracking cookies, a move it presents as a noble deed to protect users' privacy. The changes will concern Chrome, a browser over 60% of us use. Other browsers, like Firefox or Safari, added automatic anti-tracking features long ago. So it looks like Google is finally catching up. Google announced its Chrome update will allow users to block and delete third-party cookies. Visiting a website usually creates a number of third-party cookies running in the background, many of which track users over different web pages. One challenge the browser update will have to solve is how to not delete cookies that are helpful for the user. Cookies, cookies tell the, the other side something about me. That's, uh, now that might be useful if I'm shopping online, online shop, for example, because it lets a website recall um, which items I've already placed in my shopping cart. As a user, I might want that remembered. But whether I'd want third parties, advertisers or trackers to know about it is an entirely separate question. I might agree with the website provider knowing something, which I wouldn't want a third party to know. Google wants to tackle the problem and allow users to distinguish and choose. It also wants to make it easier to see who third party cookies are from. Chrome has also taken on so-called fingerprinting, a method for creating a unique fingerprint of your computer. Instead of cookies, fingerprinting relies on metadata such as time zones, screen resolution or plugins. It's almost impossible for users to notice, not to mention stop. How well Chrome's privacy settings will work will, to a large extent, depend on how user-friendly they are. Chrome has already offered several different privacy settings, but none of them have been easy to find, nor have they contained restrictions for third-party cookies. 
Suchen die Leute do people actively search for those settings? Benutzen do they use them? Or do they leave everything in their default so settings, which may be to their disadvantage? Am It wäre would be es, best if these things were set more strictly by default. Etwas strenger eingestellt wäre. Experience with previous updates has shown that when users have to actively seek out and choose their settings, few will go those extra steps. To truly protect user privacy, it needs to be guaranteed by the default setting. I myself often don't have time to switch my settings when I visit a new website. And unfortunately, that seems to be the case for most users. Now, I know the Internet has Big Brother capabilities. If some guy with a camera were following me around all day, I'd never stand for it. But whenever I check my emails in the morning or visit a web page or look at what's happening on Facebook or Instagram, over 100 third-party trackers are following my every move. This is the unpleasant truth behind tracking. Cookies can be made visible with specialized software. For example, with Firefox's free plugin, Lightbeam. Small triangles represent cookies. The circles are web pages. Look at all this. 217 trackers on 12 sites. That's nearly 20 trackers each. That's massive. And look, what's interesting is that they're all linked. These masses of data that increase with every click are of particular interest to the advertising industry. Advertisers make their money with personalized data and individually tailored commercials. Targeted ads based on a detailed analysis of user data make 90% of Google's revenue and 95% of Facebook's. The thing that I think people miss about this is that the more data is available about you, the more I can persuade you the way I want you to be persuaded. And what do users get from it? Mostly free access to an app, not a good deal. In 2019, the big data and business analytics industry are expected to have a turnaround of nearly $190 billion. The market is enormous. Tech giants like Google and Amazon get big slices of that pie. But so do less known companies. These are the data brokers. Trading data is a lucrative market. So-called data brokers gather personal data and enrich it with further information before trading huge databases. Friederike Kaltheuner works for Privacy International, which is trying to make the data broker network more transparent. The reason most of us don't know data brokers is because we're not their customers, we're their product. Data brokers gather data from numerous sources from public records at registration offices, or sweepstakes, or customer loyalty cards. Add to that the data on web surfing behavior provided by trackers or online profiles. This tells them a user's name, their address, their job. But it also reveals what they like, for instance, what kind of music a person enjoys, which series they watch, and who they're friends with. Axiom is one of the largest data brokers. It compiles up to 10,000 characteristics and attributes for a single profile. These individualized profiles can help banks, landlords, or insurance companies determine how likely it is a customer will pay. Meanwhile, the ad industry makes use of the profiles to micro-target their ads. The basic rule is, the more specific and current data is, the more valuable and expensive it becomes. And corporations are particularly interested in new chapters in our lives. Weddings, pregnancies, severe illness, anything that changes our lives significantly also changes our consuming behavior. And that's what companies want to know. A data broker knows if I'm single or married, healthy or sick, rich or poor. They know what I do when I'm alone and when I'm with others. I'm assigned up to 10,000 characteristics in my profile, and I know nothing about them. I can't even verify if they're accurate. Still, I get categorized according to my profile, and it's used to make decisions about me, like whether I should get a specific car insurance or a bank loan. New advances in privacy software 
are meant to protect users from excessive data tracking. At least in Europe, everything is supposed to be completely transparent by law. Are tech giants really changing their ways? Frederik Richter has his doubts. Apple has been making great strides for years. They say they've spearheaded privacy and data protection. That's why other large corporations in California are following suit. But it remains to be seen if that's all just a marketing ploy or if it will result in serious efforts. Personalized advertising relies on tracking tools like cookies. The advertisers generate large revenues with targeted ads. And the biggest player in the market is Google. But some critics fear that blocking Chrome cookies could harm smaller competitors and websites trying to market themselves. Google stopping third parties, so advertisers, from learning more about its users may not be in the company's interest. But what I'm more concerned about are users' interests. And if users are being shielded from third parties more, parties that they aren't aware of and whose methods they don't know, then that protection is more important than the upsets it could cause in the advertising industry. Whether or not Google and other tech giants really do care about privacy, even if only to protect their business, the initiative has certainly benefited the user. That sounds like it's good for users, but it also makes Google even stronger. They don't have to stop collecting data, they're simply stopping others from doing it. Seems the battle for privacy is far from over. What do you think? Is your privacy important to you? Do you feel trading your data for a service like Google Maps is a fair deal? We'd love to know how you deal with these issues. Let us know on Facebook, on DW.com or YouTube. See you there. Bye bye.